Massive wildfires rage through San Diego's North County. Thousands are still evacuated from their homes. We'll have the latest on all the relief efforts. And thousands were forced to flee their homes with little or no warning. We'll share just some of their emotional stories. Firefighters discover what could be the first fire-related fatality, leaving investigators with many unanswered questions. We'll have the details ahead. With high temperatures throughout the week, find out what the weather will be like this weekend. New scene starts right now. Welcome to this edition of New Scene. I'm Nate Holmes. And I'm Larry Moser. Thank you for joining us. And we begin um, this evening with nine big fires that devastated San Diego County. They've destroyed at least 20 homes, two businesses, and displaced thousands since Tuesday. And in addition, thousands of school children are being kept home for their safety. The Cocos Fire in San Marcos and Tomahawk Fire near Camp Pendleton are still active, but the most destructive of the fires was the Poinsettia Blaze in Carlsbad. It forced the closure of Legoland and thousands to evacuate from their homes. And this week we saw soaring temperatures, strong winds, and low humidity to fuel an early start to the fire season. Add to that the worst drought in at least a century, and it's turned a bad situation into a disaster. A state of emergency was declared for San Diego County, clearing the way for federal assistance. Some suspect arson and say it's more than just a coincidence that we have at least these 10 fires in, uh, in San Diego. Although CAL FIRES is investigating, it could be months before we know the exact cause of all the fires, although we do hear today that there is, uh, there is uh, uh, the Bernardo fire was caused by uh, construction. What we're hearing so far. Yes, and we um, there was a press conference in San Marcos yesterday, and the San Diego County Sheriff Bill Gore stated that the fire teams are coming together to get this fire under wraps. It was a tremendous effort, joint effort there. And we do know the winds played a big factor in those fires, and they are uh, slowing down finally. Antonio Marquez is in the Weather Center with some no more about the uh, weather and how it's affected the fires. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Nate. Let's take a look at our map where the high winds are coming over California, building out the pressure coming in at 65 miles per hour, but once they hit the coast, they, they slow down to 35 miles per hour. Now with the dry winds and the hot wind coming in together, it builds up the temperature, giving us really hot weather that doesn't help the, temp the fires at all. But during the weekend, we'll have more. Find out more about the weather coming up. Thank you, Antonio. Thanks, and more than five years after the Cedar Fires, San Diego Fire and Rescue has made it clear that they are better prepared than ever before. San Diego Fire and Rescue teams have trained several, has, excuse me, have several new codes of conduct for firestorm emergencies. Among the new procedures are timely evacuations, more trained volunteer staff, and additional firefighting resources. The fleet of aircraft now include three military air tankers and a, coveted, and a converted DC-10 super tanker that are all currently fighting the fires. And evacuation centers are still open for those who have been displaced from their home. Roxanne Elias is here with more. Thank you, Nate and Larry. Yes, many families have been affected. Um, thousands of people are displaced from their homes after this week's fires in San Diego have burned over 10,000 acres. I have an inside look at the evacuation sites and how those evacuees are reacting to difficult times. Volunteers come to the rescue for hundreds of people who've been forced to evacuate from their homes. One resident was at a local library and was completely caught off guard. Oh my God, I cannot even believe it myself. We were at the library in Carlsbad doing some computer job. My, one of my friends, my roommate, came and said, uh, there is fire out there. I, I, I he didn't, didn't, couldn't believe it. And thanks God, the Red Cross, we are the guest of Red Cross. It, this right here is one of the many cots people will be laying their head tonight to sleep. And this is one of the kits that they receive as they walk through the door, which includes shampoo, deodorant, and even a toothbrush to make them feel more at home during this devastating time. Evacuation orders were sent via text message, email, and by phone, forcing people to leave their daily routines, ending up here with hundreds of other strangers welcomed with open arms. You know, it's just, just thank you because 
I don't, there's nothing I could do to protect my house and it's so awesome to know that someone else would put their life in danger to save mine and that's just really awesome. The evacuees are overcome with emotion, grateful to the shelter volunteers who sprung into action, giving their time, care, and support. You know, the people that have been coming through, everybody's been wonderful. And the volunteers that have been bringing supplies to the shelter, unsolicited, the county's pulled together just to make everything work on this. Time the Red Cross volunteers want to make sure that people know that it's very important to stay in contact with your family and friends. They urge everyone to please evacuate to shelters if you're in an area of danger. So definitely want to keep people alert and, and definitely want to go to a shelter if anything's going on in your area. Definitely. We want to remind everybody just to please be safe while they're out there doing those fires. Yeah. Thank you, Roxanne. And the rapid spread of wildfires uh, forced many owners of large animals to evacuate to Del Mar Fairgrounds and other locations throughout the county. Marcia Villavicencio has more. Even though not an official site for evacuation, Del Mar Fairgrounds opened their doors to help many horse owners affected by the fires. They come with their animals, we're going to take them and we won't turn them away. We received 800 horses and today Wednesday we had received another uh, 300, so we're close to 1100, which is kind of like 30% of our capacity. As early as Tuesday night, many people were evacuated from their homes. Some of them even had to spend the night here at Del Mar Fairgrounds to take care of their animals. The staff at Del Mar were very helpful and made sure that horse owners and their animals had plenty of the supplies they needed. They bring cases of water for you, they give you flashlights. You just go to the feed store and order hay and shavings and they just bring it to you. Oh yeah, they've just been fabulous. Along with the fairgrounds, other locations like SeaWorld and animal shelters around San Diego are taking in animals for evacuation. With photojournalist Tony Luna, this is Marcia Villavicencio for News Scene. For more information on the animal site uh, evacuation sites, please dial 211, that's which, is, which is the San Diego Disaster Assistance, or just contact your local pet shelter. All right, we want to show you some fire footage. Take a look at this time-lapse video from Stone Cold Brewery in Escondido. It shows the Escondido fire starting from small plumes and ending in a raging wildfire. You can see it start out as three small stacks of smoke and the fire grows and whips into small twisters. Finally, it becomes an all-out wildfire um, with three tornado-like plumes. Just amazing video. Mm. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, the deadly fires claimed their first and hopefully the only victim yesterday. News Scene shot this video at the intersection of Caliandra and Ambrosia in Carlsbad. The victim's severely uh, burned body was discovered by fire crews who were there mopping up an area of Sa the San Marcos fire. The medical examiner has not released any information about the victim, but the body was found in an area that was believed to be a homeless encampment. One adult and one teen have been arrested in connection with starting a small brush fire near Kit Carson Park in Escondido last night. 19-year-old Isaiah Silva and a juvenile whose identity is not being released are charged with one count of arson. Witnesses reported suspicious behavior and alerted authorities. We have also seized evidence that indicates to us that these are the two individuals that were reported to be involved in setting fires. These teenagers are not being investigated for starting any of the nine big fires which burnt throughout the county this week. And up next, new policies might let more marijuana dispensaries to open up here in San Diego. And in sports, the Padres took on the Reds in a doubleheader. Could they keep their winning streak alive?